The question of how to treat migrants and refugees is making headlines these days. It's a contemporary question. It's also an old question which is addressed many times in the Jewish and Christian traditions. So it's worth asking, what does the Bible say about how we're supposed to treat refugees, migrants, and foreigners? Well, it's pretty clear, and it starts all the way back in the book of Exodus. God tells Moses, and through him the whole people of Israel, you shall not oppress the resident alien among you. You know the heart of an alien, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. That's two messages from God. First, care for the refugee. In the ancient Near East, as outsiders, people without an attachment to a clan, foreigners were vulnerable and often poor, just like migrants and refugees today. So they needed special help. Second, God is reminding the Israelites that they were themselves aliens once, when they were in exile in Egypt. The Old Testament reminds us of this in Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. In fact, the book of Deuteronomy says that God loves the stranger. Psalm 146 echoes this, saying, the Lord protects the stranger. The Hebrew scriptures remind us of two essential things. First, God's command to care for refugees, migrants, and aliens. Second, God's special love for them. In case we missed the point, in the book of Kings, King Solomon directs his people to pay attention to the foreigner who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land. And what are we to do? Solomon says, do according to all that the foreigner calls you to. In other words, answer any need that the migrant or refugee has. Jesus is even stronger about this in the New Testament. In the parable of the Good Samaritan from the Gospel of Luke, Jesus tells the story of a Jewish man going from Jerusalem to Jericho and who is robbed and beaten. As he's lying by the side of the road, two people pass by, a priest and a Levite, both from the man's own religious group. They were probably afraid to stop. The road to Jericho, which still exists, was notoriously dangerous and prone to robbers. Finally, a Samaritan man stops to help. Samaritans were the traditional opponents of the Jews, outsiders. Notice that the Samaritan doesn't care about the danger, or maybe he does and helps the man anyway. Jesus reminds us that we're called to help the stranger even if there's risk involved. Jesus doesn't say help the stranger only if it's risk-free, or only if it's convenient, or only if that person is from the same religious group as you. No, Jesus says show mercy to the stranger regardless. He's also saying that just like the beaten man, our own salvation may depend upon a stranger. In fact, Jesus says that the way we treat strangers will be a litmus test for entrance into heaven. At the last judgment, he'll say to some people, I was a stranger and you didn't welcome me. And some people will answer, Lord, when did we see you as a stranger and not help you? And he will say that every time you didn't help a stranger, you didn't help me. That's the way it will be decided who enters heaven, says Jesus. And just in case you think that this only applies to individuals, the traditional name for this passage in the New Testament might help. It's called the Judgment of the Nations. Perhaps the strongest message from Jesus is not what he said, but what he did. After his birth, Mary and Joseph take Jesus from Israel to Egypt. Were there border guards and passports during what's called the flight into Egypt? No. But Mary and Joseph and their son were fleeing persecution and the threat of death at the hands of King Herod. So using the contemporary definition, we can say that among all the refugees that our world has seen were Mary, Joseph, and Jesus.